Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another daily devotion. Uh, this devotion is for Friday, August 26th of 2022. We are almost done. We have one more day. Uh, Monday, we will end chapter 26. But we are in the 26th chapter of Matthew's Gospel. Uh, today, we're going to look at verses 57 to 68. Uh, this has to do with the arrest of Jesus. He has been, or with the trial, I should say, of Jesus. He's just been arrested in the garden, and the disciples have just fled. So that's where we left off. Uh, Judas gave him the kiss of betrayal, and he was arrested. We had the ear being cut off. We talked about all that yesterday, so I won't go into that. Um, but let's jump right in here uh, to verse 57 and go through 68 in chapter 26 of Matthew. Those who had arrested Jesus took him to Caiaphas, the high priest, where the scribes and the elders had gathered. But Peter was following him at a distance, as far as the courtyard of the high priest, and going inside he sat with the guards, in order to see how this would end. Now the chief priests and the whole council were looking for false testimony against Jesus, so they might put him to death. But they found none. Though many false witnesses came forward, at last two came forward and said, This fellow said, I am able to destroy the temple of God and to build it in three days. The high priest stood up and said, Have you no answer? What is it that they testify against you? But Jesus was silent. Then the high priest said to him, I put you under oath before the living God. Tell us if you are the Messiah, the Son of God. Jesus said to him, You have said so, but I tell you, from now on you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of power and coming on the clouds of heaven. Then the high priest tore his clothes and said, He has blasphemed. Why do we still need witnesses? You have now heard his blasphemy. What do you think? They answered, He deserves death. Then they spat in his face and struck him. And some slapped him, saying, Prophesy to us, you Messiah. Who is it that struck you? Okay, so right here we've got Jesus uh, being on trial. It looks like they have already pre-assembled the Sanhedrin. They knew they were going to arrest Jesus. They had sent these guys out to go get him. So they have assembled the Sanhedrin and wait for him. Um, and when they get there, they've been trying, and, and verse 59, uh, the, the way that that reads in the Greek, it's they've been trying for a while. It's not like they just tried this day to find testimony to, to use against Jesus. It looks like they've been working on this for a period of time. Uh, seems to be the, the indication from the Greek in verse uh, verse 59. So, uh, but finally in verse 60, they have two witnesses that come forward. And they needed two witnesses to agree. Mark's gospel tells us that even these two didn't agree. Uh, so they, they're really kind of going on skating on thin ice. So finally, the, the high priest uses a, a tactic uh, from the Mishnah where he's put him under an oath to answer the question. You have to answer the question, yes. You know, and it's not a yes or no per se question. Uh, would seem like it to us, but under Greek or Jewish tradition, rather, um, Jesus gives the proper response uh, for, for a for in, in Jewish tradition. He's not just saying yes or no. Uh, what he says here that the NRSV translates as, you have said so, and they're at, he's asked if he's in fact the Messiah. Um, the, the NRSV uh, says, you have said so, but that's a little misleading because it, 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 it's generally translated as either I am or it is as you've said, which would be much more the affirmative. Uh, you have said so would mean you're saying it, I'm not. I, you know, I'm not the one saying it, you're the one saying it. Uh, but he, 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 in fact, answers it in, in such a way that it's definitely an affirmative response. He is making the statement, I am the Son of God. And then he goes on to quote from Daniel chapter 7. This is actually verse 13 uh, that he's quoting when it says, From now on you will see the Son of Man uh, seated at the right hand of power. Now, the right hand of power could be the mighty one, of course, God. Uh, the Son of Man. Now, Jesus typically identifies himself as the Son of Man, but the Son of Man, that's in Daniel. It's not Jesus changing the wording. That's the way it's worded uh, in Daniel's chapter 7. So he is quoting this. And, of course, then the high priest just goes ballistic. He's, but he's got what he wanted. The end it justifies the means, as uh, the old adage goes. Uh, they've got this sham of a trial. They've, had to, they've got these two guys that, according to, again, Mark, they don't even really agree, so he kind of has to force the issue. Um, so he's done this by, by hook or by crook. 
Uh, and again, the end justifies the means, whatever way you can do it to get him to say something that he thinks he can use. Um, and now there's, he's going to, uh, to, con to uh, declare that he deserves to be killed. Um, but there's some problems with all of this. Now, here in the preacher's commentary, um, we read the following about this trial, where there's some issues with the trial. Um, it says, studies have shown that the trial of Jesus were illegally conducted according to Jewish law. And it goes on to say, the Talmud says that the Sanhedrin is to save, not to destroy life. Uh, it says the capital crimes were to be tried during the daytime only. This was tried during the night. Um, they were not to be tried during festival times. And of course, this is Passover. Um, they were not to deal with, to be dealt with at a single sitting of one day. You had to have them. It had to, you had to give a cooling off time. Let's put it that way. You couldn't just go in and do it in one sitting. Uh, they were not to be tried with immediate appearances of witnesses. Um, they were not to be tried with immediate appearances of witnesses for the persecution, for this is a breach of law. There was no pre precedent or a single evidence for a person claiming to be the Messiah, being accused of blasphemy and being sentenced to death. This is a unique declaration by the high priest that he, because he, you've blasphemed, you've got to be killed. Apparently that's not the case. There, there's no precedent prior to this. Uh, if a man stood accused of blasphemy in relation to the name of God, Jewish authorities could have him stoned, but they must hand him over to the governor, you, you, which they do. Uh, the priests were to have judgment in the charge, but they presented Jesus to Pilate, making him a political suspect. Um, the the priests were supposed to be the ones making the judgment. They hand him over, basically, to have the sentence fulfilled, not not hand it over to Pilate, to have Pilate make the decree. Now, they were trying to wash their hands of this. Um, and the temple guard could not act for the high priest in arrest, charging blasphemy, unless they themselves were witnesses to the blasphemy. The high priest would be the one having to go make the arrest. Uh, and then finally, uh, the accused could not be cross-examined by the judges. See, they're they're cross-examining; they're not supposed to be doing that. Uh, they're acting as the, as the judge and the attorney, uh, the prosecution, and that's not. That's, we don't do that that way in, in our modern courts. Nation, we're supposed to do it that way here either. Um, so there are some issues there. And so why would they do this? Why would the end justify the means? Well, there's a couple of reasons, I think, uh, for that. One uh, being, of course, that they are in collusion with the Romans. Um, they don't want disruption. They don't want the, we, we've talked about this, I believe, before um, in Matthew's Gospel. If not, we've talked about it before in other uh, devotions, and I've talked about it many times in the sermons, but they don't want a disruption in the, in, in the status quo. You know, we got a good thing going here. We're on the grift here. We're, we're getting, we're, 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 we, we don't want the Romans to, to come crashing down and, you know, kick us out of town, which of course is what happens in, in 70 when they just, dis they destroy the temple and they drive all the Jews out of, uh, Jerusalem, and of course, that's the end of the, the, the Sadducees. You don't hear about the Sadducees um, really uh, after that. Now, it's something I should go back and study to see how if the Sadducee movement survived for any period of time. But it, it's uh, today what we have left are Pharisees. Um, the Pharisaic movement is what survived, and it became the Christianity as well as modern Judaism. Um, so these these multitude of different Jewish sects pretty much just dry up quickly after. Uh, 70 AD with the destruction of the temple. Um, and of course, without the temple, you don't need the Sadducees because they're the priestly caste. Um, but so they don't want that. They don't want think. They don't want to mess up the good thing they've got going. But the other thing is, is that if Jesus, you know, if he in fact truly really is the Messiah, they know the culpability of their crimes. Um, and we, you know, um, do I really want to confess my crime? You know, confess my crimes here. Um, I'd rather deny it. I'd rather deny it and, and hope that he really isn't the Messiah. But because if he really is, I'm in deep trouble, deep trouble, deep, as they say. And none of us wants to admit our own uh, failures, our own sins. And we'll talk more about that Monday. So we're going to leave you with that hanging because um, Monday we talk, come back and we talk about Peter's denial of Jesus. And we're closing in on 10 minutes. That's as long as I like these devotions to be. So to be continued on Monday. Same bat time, same bat station. All right. If you've enjoyed this, please like and subscribe. We'd love to have you back. And uh, with that, please be a blessing to someone today. All right. Bye-bye. Take care. God bless.